What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades. Today's featured blade is the San Renmu Land 9104 Frame Lock Folder. This offering is a budget model from San Renmu Knives. San Renmu is a Chinese OEM manufacturer. And if I told you all of the brands that San Renmu makes knives for, it'd have to be a 30-minute video just for that. So we're not going to get into it. Uh, suffice to say, you would be surprised how many brand name knives have gone through your hand that were actually manufactured in China by San Renmu. All right, guys. Um, now, I typically would not say anything like this up front in a review, but I'm going to say that because I have one person that is sub to my channel that delights, and I'm not going to name this person because I don't even care. This person delights in any video, any knife that I review that could be remotely called a copy or a clone or a rip-off knife, he jumps right in there, and he's just, blah, 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 I wouldn't buy that, and, you know, for the money, you could get something that wasn't a rip-off, and I wish this company wouldn't do so-and-so and such-and-such, and, such and, you know, and you know who you are. Uh, I look forward to reading what you say. Thank you for watching the video, because you do watch the video. So, um... Yes, guys, this is a, what I'm going to call from now on, a quote-unquote tribute knife, and it is a tribute to the Chris Reeve knives Sabenza 21. Uh, it's, it's basically a direct copy. Now, in a lot of these tribute knives, there are very subtle differences. I do not have a Sabenza 21 in my collection uh, at this time, so I can't A-B them here, but there are some very subtle differences, but for the most part, this is a direct copy of a Chris Reeves Sabenza 21, just at a budget price point and produced in China. You can get this knife for around $18, and I'm going to tell you what, in my opinion, it is one of the best bargains on the market, period, at that price point, guys. Just period. Um, now, I do not have the box out here because it just comes in a plain uh, white box. There's absolutely no marking on it, no labeling on it, so I didn't drag it out. Uh, I'm sure that's a, co a cost-cutting effort on the part of San Remo. And uh, I want to, and I will link this in the description, um, I have already done a video on this knife where it was disassembled. It's a look at the interior of the knife. Uh, be sure and check that out, and it will show you just how high quality the machining is on this knife. And I'm going to tell you, in the $20, sub $20 price point, I have not found anything from any manufacturer that even comes close to the quality of this knife nothing guys uh and i'm going to point out a bunch of stuff during the video but i think you are going to be impressed with this one if you can get past the fact that it is a copy of a sabenza 21 now um as it's a copy of a sabenza 21 the specs are a lot alike and let's go through those real quick get the numbers out of the way uh you about three and a half inches or 88 millimeters on the blade length the blade stock thickness is 120 thousandths of an inch or 3 millimeters. The blade width 1.1 inches or 28.1 millimeters. The handle length 4 and 3 eighths of an inch or 11 centimeters. The handle thickness 415 thousandths of an inch or 10.5 millimeters. The handle width at the widest point at the pivot 1.14 inches or 29 millimeters. The closed width 1.23 inches or 31.3 millimeters that gives us an overall length of about seven and seven eighths of an inch or 20 centimeters your stop pin pretty uh, decent stop pin diameter 153 thousandths of an inch or 3.9 millimeters 
Uh, behind the edge thickness, a very respectable 20 thousandths of an inch or 0.52 millimeters. The handle to blade ratio, again, a very respectable number right at 0.8. And your weight, a surprisingly light weight of 4.73 ounces or 134 grams. And that is due to the uh, extensive interior milling of these, uh, the handle, the frame on this frame lock folder. Now, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go into some um materials here for your blade steel you are in sandvik 12c27 stainless uh that is a swedish steel from sandvik uh it is you would compare it as just by the numbers the carbon content of 0 0.6 and the chromium content of 13.5 it's most often compared to 440a but uh, it is a very, very refined, very pure and fine-grained stainless steel. Uh, it performs more like um, sort of an old-school high-end stainless like ATS 34 or 154CM. Uh, no, the performance is not quite at the level that they are, but it performs more like those steels than it would a typical 440 or a Chinese uh, medium carbon stainless like 8CR. Um, it typically is going to be rock wheeled in the 56 to 59 range, typically 57, 58 rock wheel. Uh, with this, you get decent wear resistance or edge retention, uh, very good toughness. That is one of the attributes of this steel. It is very tough. It's a good field use steel, stainless steel, and good corrosion resistance. Now, um, the handle on this, it is a frame lock and it is in stainless steel. And you'll notice this knife before, you know, we say anything else is in an overall black wash finish. That's what you're seeing here under the lights. Um, so you've got stainless slabs for your handle. Again, a frame lock. Uh, all of your small hardware is uh, like finished stainless, except for a lanyard tube here finished in blue and thumb studs finished in blue also again sabenza 21 ish um so i mean right you're just looking at a solid stainless steel knife now i noted that the weight was pretty decent at 4.73 ounces and for those of you that have not seen my video and i don't know if i'm going to get it under the light in here because um yeah, I, I don't think that I'm going to get it. Got, well, there you go. You can see down into the handle there. There is extensive large pocket milling uh, on the face side of the handle scale and on the frame, uh, the lock side uh, scale also. I keep calling it a scale. It's basically, it's a frame since there's no handle scale really. Um, but... Uh, that's what gives you your fairly light weight. Again, go back and watch that video because I've got the knife taken apart and I do detail up close stuff with it to show you the quality. Uh, but further into the video, when we do fit and finish, I will point out a lot of the things that we're looking at. So you're looking at an overall stainless um, material on this knife 100% for the most part. All right, fit and finish. Well, guys, let's let's touch first on the design aspect of this. There is a reason the CRK Sabenza 21 is such a popular knife. The design is fantastic. Uh, and this knife um, rides the coattails of that design. It's a copy, guys. So design-wise, you're getting every uh, positive aspect of the Sabenza 21. Fit and finish wise, for the $18 price point, I would say this knife is, again, better than anything that I have come across. It is damn near perfect. The grinds on the blade, which are a high flat grind, are even 
side to side. You can see in the plunge there. Uh, there is no swedge. The distilled taper on the knife is nice and even and soft. It's not abrupt. Um, the edge grind is even side to side on this knife. Um, I, just fan, fantastic grinds on this knife. You can see we've got a large sharpening choil here that does go well out past the plunge. No, no issue resharpening this knife. You do have a long section of flat here for any type of clamp system uh, and you are not going to have any issues with edge flare at the termination end of the grind. No funny business there uh, because you are clear of the plunge grind. Um, another fantastic feature of this, it does carry over the fully crowned spine of the blade. You can see that it is fully crowned and radiused. Very well done, guys. No issue there. It's aesthetically pleasing. Um, you have a decent section lengthwise of jimping here that is very good jimping. Now, typically, I'm not a big fan of flat-topped jimping. I actually prefer the more uh, peaked-type jimping that you would find on a Spyderco Paramilitary too. But... This jimping, the flat tops are narrow, and there is a good amount of space in between the peaks, and it's cut fairly deep. Uh, when you have a large space in between the peaks on your jimping, when you put pressure on a jimping, it allows the flesh from your thumb to go down in those indentions, and that locks your thumb right onto that. You can see right here. Uh, it is a very, very good jimping, guys. No problems there. Uh, the next thing, the thumb studs, uh, you know, dual thumb studs, left and right. The finishing is not the most even blue side to side at $18. Who cares? Uh, they are great thumb studs, very functional. Again, thank you, Chris Reeve Knives. Um, so no issues fit and finish wise on the blade. It is above, above the quality level you would ever expect at the $18 price point. I'm talking guys, if they charged $50 for this knife, I would have to say it was a bargain. Um, as far as the fit and finish on the handle, the machining is absolutely perfect. There is no machine marks anywhere on this knife. Um, you can see, let's see if we can see down in here in this cutout for your lock bar. Now, a lot of times that's a telltale place to look uh, on a knife. And you see how smooth this cut is. There's no machining marks or anything, guys. Uh, it is not a stamped steel handle. Uh, because if it was stamped, you would see in steel stamping, what you get is shear and break. And what that means is as it stamps through the material, it shears partially through and then it breaks the rest of the material out. If you will grab a knife of yours that has stamped steel components on it and you look at them across the depth of the material, you will see the shear and the break on that stamp steel component. On this, it is absolutely smooth. There is no machine marks anywhere on this knife, guys. Nowhere uh, except on the inside of the handle in the milled pockets. The flat of those pockets does have the radial machining marks left from the milling procedure. Uh, but elsewhere on this handle, it is completely smooth and uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, absolutely perfect from what I can see, which tells me the machining was very well done initially and then this, this handle components went through a media tumbling process that broke all the edges. I mean, everything is just butter, butter smooth, guys. Uh, it is just fabulously done. The It has a section of very nice jimping here on this breakthrough, the cutaway for the lock bar to gain purchase on the lock bar to unlock it. 
Um, very, very nice work there. Uh, the pocket clip, again, thank you, Chris Reeve Knives, Sabenza 21. Very good pocket clip design. It is in a milled recess with a single screw. Uh, it is a very... It's pretty stiff for a stamp steel pocket clip, guys. It's got a lot of clamping force in it. Um, it's comfortable in the hand also, so no issues there. The hardware, uh, again, when I took this knife apart, none of it had any Loctite on it. Uh, the hardware felt quality. Uh, I had no issues with the fit of the tool. The sockets are well done. They are deep. Uh, it, it feels like pretty quality hardware and I can attest to the actual hardness but I did not have any issues with soft hardware for this so again $18 guys I, I'm telling you this knife is a uh, well and above anything you could ever expect at that price point all right um and as far as the black wash finish overall, I you know what I personally love black wash. Some people don't like black wash. Um, there is a version of this knife, the 9103, which is the same exact knife, exact. It just does not have the black wash finish. It's got an overall satin sort of finish and just the plain silver stainless finish. Um, but I prefer the black wash. I love the way black wash comes out where it breaks all the edges through the finish and you get to see all the faceting, uh, all the details in this knife that may just be lost if uh, it was just one uniform sort of silvery stainless finish. Uh, so I, I very much like black wash. It's very well done, guys. No issues there. In fact, overall, there are zero zero issues of any type with fit and finish on this knife absolutely none there is nothing on this knife i would have done different personally and that's saying a lot when a knife enthusiast says that not that my opinion matters that much but you yourself know as a knife enthusiast if you get a knife in your hand and you can say it's perfect for what it is, it's perfect. That is a fantastic knife. Now, on to the action. And uh, this is on a bearing pivot. It is very smooth, guys. It has a fantastic detent. Um, it's sort of a stiff detent for opening it one-handed. You can hear it break out of that detent. Uh, just slow opening one hand with the thumb stud. But as far as shooting it out, like you're shooting marbles, uh, this thing is like a little rocket ship, guys. It is awesome. And the bearing pivot is so smooth, guys. Uh, absolutely no feel of the bearings rotating. Um, as I showed in my disassembly video, the bearings were absolutely packed in a stiff grease. Uh, and that was the reason I initially took the knife apart because it was really smooth, but there was a sensation of resistance. Uh, and I wanted to check out if that was in the bearings themselves or if it's just really dry or what. And it was packed full of grease. Again, the disassembly was straightforward. I just took it apart. I cleaned all the grease out of it, re-lubed it with a nano oil type of uh, oil, reassembled, no issues there. Uh, it is just buttery smooth, guys. Uh, it is. It is very high quality feeling. Uh, those bearings are steel bearings, I believe. I Honestly, I didn't even look at that because it was so smooth, I didn't even care but they are in a black polymer race. Um, and they, you know what? It very much acceptable for $18, guys. A bearing pivot knife at $18? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, as far as the lockup, the lockup on my example is about 50% and has stayed that way, guys. Uh, it's very solid. There is no play in any direction. Uh, the centering on my example, damn near perfect. Um, it is just overall, as far as action goes, so very pleasing. Uh, it is not a guillotine drop 
but it is more of a hydraulic resistance type of drop, guys. Uh, yeah, it's it's just very smooth, uh, so no issues there. All right. Um, now, we're going to set this down, and we're going to talk just a second here on the overall and the ergos on this thing. Like I said, uh, the Chris Reeves Sabenza 21 model is a standard in the high-end knife market, and you're talking in excess of $400 as an entry price on one of those, whereas this tribute is at the $18 price point. What you get in that is the superior ergos and design language of the Sabenza 21. Uh, now, I am not telling everybody to go out and buy these instead of a Sabenza 21. I think you absolutely have to be insane to think that anybody is going to buy this knife instead of a Sabenza 21. Uh, if I was buying $400 knives right now at this stage in my life, I would not even consider having this knife instead of a Sabenza 21. I would have a Sabenza 21. Um, so I don't really, you know, there's no giant moral conundrum connected with buying this knife. Yes, it's a copy knife, guys. But people that buy $18 knives do not hurt Chris Reeve knives by buying um, these knives instead of one of the uh, CRK products. This knife is plainly marked uh, all over. It is never going to be mistaken for anything but a San Ren Moon Land 9104 Never going to mistake that. There's nobody out there buying these and selling them to unsuspecting noobs as Sabenza 21s. That's just a, a crazy fantasy that, that tribute knife and copy knife haters dream up as reasoning to bash people for buying knives like this. Uh, what you do get is every bit of the benefit of the design, some quality materials, very high-end manufacturing for this price point, very high-end. I cannot stress that enough. For those of you that think that Ganzo makes a good product in the $20 and less price point, you owe it to yourself to get one of these. This is so far beyond what Ganzo is doing that it's just hard to explain. You need to put it in your hands and check it for yourself. And you guys know I'm a big Ganzo fan, so I'm not bashing on them. I'm just telling you this is better. And it, there is no doubt in my mind that it is better in every way uh, as far as the manufacturing. Material-wise, it's about the same material-wise uh, with 12C27 versus 440C. That's a sort of a trade-off to me. They're slightly different, yes. But as far as, uh, you know, price point and availability of steels, um, they're, they're very close. But as far as the manufacturing and the fit and finish, uh, there is no comparison. No comparison at all. This knife is, um, it is just better made than any Gans I've ever had come through my hands. The action is awesome. The ergos, I mean, what can I say? Sabenza 21, guys. I hate to keep coming back to that, but there's a reason that's a classic knife, and you get that here in this. So, in closing, can I recommend this one? Will I recommend it? Hell yes, I will. I have been blown away by what this knife, what San Renmu is bringing to the table in this knife at this sub $20 price point. I believe anybody would be blown away with this. Now, if you are not interested in a stainless handled frame lock, if you're one of those people that find them too slick, then they also have the 910 Plus model, which is the same exact design in a steel liner lock with G10 handle scales. And I believe those are available in, black, in both Black G10 and OD G10. Same blade steel, same bearing pivot system, but in a liner lock with G10 handle scales. Um, so that'll give you the extra grippiness of the G10. All right, overall, get it, guys. Check it out. 
Uh, I'm telling you right now, I would be surprised if you didn't like it. Um, and I would be surprised if you weren't just as impressed with it as I am. All right, guys. Once again, I thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you. And we will talk to you again.